So, welcome to the second Empath tutorial. I am Marijn Mestag, one of the co-founders of Empath, and in this second tutorial, we will talk about how to schedule questionnaires for a specific participant. Again, we will schedule uh, questionnaires for one single participant, um, but later in the next tutorial about automatization, you will learn how to schedule questionnaires for a whole group of participants, um, and how to automate the whole uh, process. But also there you will need the skills to just um, schedule a questionnaire for one single participant, so that is where we will start. In this case, we will schedule a questionnaire for Meren uh, test. We can go here. Uh, this is again um, the empty questionnaire creationer, uh, creator and uh, the participant currently still has an empty uh, schedule. We can first quickly create a questionnaire here. For example, uh, happy, uh, are you now? Uh, give label happy. Um, and then call it questionnaire one, something like that. Uh, and then it's very easy to schedule this, um, this questionnaire. Uh, you can just go, uh, go down here to the scheduler and just click on it. And then with that, the questionnaires are scheduled. One at, let's say you can also move them, uh, drag them. One at eight o'clock, one at 11 o'clock, uh, two o'clock, five o'clock, for example, and eight o'clock. So what I always do is I first create the first day um, of the uh, schedule and then I click on fill then I click on extend last day extend for example for 13 days for um, well two weeks in total 14 days in total I click on ok and then um, the whole schedule is uh, filled with questionnaires for two weeks as you can see and then third week there is nothing anymore when I then would click on save save all uh, the interaction and schedule has been saved and at that uh, from that point on the participant will start to receive questionnaires Now let's dig a bit deeper deeper first. Let's clear the schedule again um, There are a lot of settings we can change uh, in a schedule so when we um, schedule an interaction or a questionnaire we can click on the scheduled interaction and then here all the uh, settings appear. The first thing we see here is that, um, that the questionnaire that will be scheduled. Here it's questionnaire one. This is a questionnaire I just created. Let's say I also create an evening questionnaire, call it evening. Then I can, for example, uh, schedule this questionnaire in the evening for example, at 10 o'clock in the uh, evening. So with that, I mean, you don't have to always schedule exactly the same questionnaire. We can work with multiple questionnaires, uh, for example, questionnaires for during the day, questionnaires for the evening, questionnaires for the uh, weekend, um, and so on. It's important to know that it's, however, also possible to um, refer to a questionnaire from the library. Let's, for example, look up stress questionnaire, this is a questionnaire in the library. I can click on this. Then it will also get like this library icon and click on OK. And with that, um, the, uh, the, the stress questionnaire from the library will actually be sent to the participant at that time. And this can be very useful because when you use the same library questionnaire for multiple uh, participants uh, and then you find an error in the library questionnaire, you can just go to the library questionnaire, um, fix the error, update it, override the questionnaire, and from that point on, all the participants will automatically start to receive the updated um, questionnaire. So this is specifically interesting, of course, when you do a research for a group of participants, um, then I think it's recommended to just use questionnaires from the library. Uh, because then during the research at any time you can change the questionnaires uh, from the library uh, you can you can override the questionnaires in the library to adapt them to fix errors and so on so for example this stress questionnaire is in the library i can go to the library um, here is a stress questionnaire i can change it for example i can remove this question uh, then i can um, export it click on override existing so now 
the, uh, the save is successful, the stress questionnaire is adapted, and all the participants that are using this will receive from now on the updated stress questionnaire. So that is the first um, setting, most important one, of course, the, um, the, the question that is, uh, or the questionnaire that is being used in that uh, schedule. Uh, then we have the start and the end time of the block. Um, this is important when you use fire randomly between start and end time. When you just use fire at start time, then only the start time of the block is important. We can also manually, use, uh, manually move um, this one. Uh, and then you can see that you also can uh, make the uh, scheduled questionnaire a bit longer. And then now the start time of the block is 5 o'clock and the end time is 9.30. Uh, but again, this only matters when you use fire randomly between start and end time. And this means that um, a notification is sent to the participant uh, at a random time between 5 o'clock and 9.30. I think this is mainly important when you do experience sampling. Um, let's say you have um, a questionnaire uh, scheduled at 10 o'clock and it's always exactly at 10 o'clock. So fire at start time uh, here and here and so on. They are all uh, exactly at start time. Let's also make stress questionnaires here. Uh, voilà. um, and also here we want stress questionnaire. Uh, um, so here we have uh, three stress, stress questionnaires um, planned and they all um, are sent to the participant at exactly 10 o'clock. Let's say the participant has a coffee break uh, at 10 o'clock, then at the end of the research we will know exactly how well the participant is feeling during the coffee break. However, in experience sampling studies we want to explore as many contexts as possible. Uh, so therefore, I think it's important to add some randomization to the schedule. And it's also important that the participant doesn't really know when the questionnaire will be coming because otherwise he, can kind of, he or she can kind of prepare for it. So therefore, in experience sampling studies, we almost always use fire randomly between start and end time. And we can do this for um, all of them, of course. Voila. Um, so that is this uh, setting. So the next setting is one-time answer. This means that participants can only answer the questionnaire once. So normally when a questionnaire is being sent to the participant, I will send it now to the participant. Uh, participant receives notification, can click on start now um, and can answer the uh, question. Voila, it's finished. Um, and then after that, participant can always click on the repeat questionnaire to answer the same question again. However, when you uh, use uh, the setting one-time answer, participants are only able to answer the questionnaire once uh, and then it's not possible anymore to click on repeat questionnaire. Of course, when you after that on the next day or later on the say, uh, same day, send the questionnaire again uh, to the participant in a new notification, of course, at that time, the participant will be able again to answer the questionnaire. Um, Next setting is a setting called required. Um, when required is used, uh, participants get a message um, after the questionnaire when it was not uh, when when the system was not able to upload the answers to uh, the uh, to the servers. Um, so normally. When the participant doesn't have any internet and he answers a questionnaire, the, uh, the, the answers are just stored locally and are sent to the server the next time the participant uh, fills in a questionnaire and has internet. Uh, but the, the participant doesn't, uh, doesn't see this if the questionnaire is actually being sent or not. Uh, however, when you use required, the participant gets a message when uh, it, it, um, the system wasn't able to immediately upload the uh, answers. But in most cases, required is well um, not required or not necessary. Then the next setting is uh, set reminder. With this one, you can bug the participants uh, even more. Uh, you can send multiple reminders, for example, one after 60 minutes, one after 120 minutes, one after 180 minutes, 
uh, and uh, so on. And then uh, the reminders will keep being sent to the participants until we actually have received the answers from the participants on the server. And of course, then the, the, the other reminders that, that would have been scheduled are cancelled. Install as a button is uh, if you want to install this questionnaire as a specific home button. You can look up uh, what the home button is in the uh, manual. Uh, set expiration is also important. Um, this means that the questionnaire uh, expires after a certain uh, time. In this case, after 60 minutes. And the 60 minutes is after the last reminder. So um, first the questionnaire is sent. 100, 180 minutes later, the last reminder is set, being sent and 60 minutes after that, so 240 minutes after uh, the questionnaire was sent for the first time, the questionnaire expires and the participant is not able to fill it in anymore. Uh, and this can be used to kind of push the participants to fill in the questionnaire in time. Um, you can of course say like um, or ask the participants to fill it in in time but again participants are lazy and then they, they, they don't fill in or wait for way too long and then it might be at a time that is not interesting for you anymore. Um, so therefore it's better to, to probably let the questionnaire expire at some time uh, and then a participant knows ah I filled in the questionnaire too late maybe next time I will try to fill it in in time. Um, and the last setting is set seat. And this is um, really nice if you use uh, experience sampling in um, a class, for example, uh, with many students, uh, for example, in a high school class, uh, and then all the students um, have to fill in the questionnaire at a random time. Well, this would of course be horrible for the teacher because all the students are looking at their phones at different times and they're all saying they have to fill in questionnaires for MPOT and so on. That wouldn't really be practical. So here you can put in a seat and with this seat um, it, it makes sure that all participants will get the same randomization. So all students in that class will get the uh, random beep at the same exact uh, time. So this makes it of course much easier for the teacher. Um, so once uh, the questionnaires have been scheduled, you can save, uh, you can save it, and from that on, um, all the all these notifications uh, are being sent to the participants. Let's go uh, quickly to the participant where some questionnaires have already been filled in from the schedule. Let's go to uh, Mario. Uh, as you can see here, there are three uh, questionnaires here. The first stress questionnaire is in light green. This means that this questionnaire actually has been filled in, has been completed. This one is in gray. This means that it has been sent, but it has not been completed. So it's actually, uh, it's actually missed until now. The participant has not yet filled in this questionnaire. And this questionnaire is in darker green. So this means that it's still being uh, scheduled and that this is a questionnaire uh, from the, for the future and that we're still waiting for this questionnaire uh, to being sent to the participant. Um, I think this is everything I wanted to tell today about scheduling a questionnaire for a single participant. Um, in the next tutorial, we will talk about automatization, how you can automat uh, automate a study for a whole group of participants, how you can schedule um, questionnaires for a whole group of participants, and so on. It will be very similar as what we've done uh, today with one uh, tiny difference. All right, see you next time.